Doing something a little bit different this week, starting with some video of Majestic Midways pulling onto a lot in Fairfax, Virginia. This is one of the last spots of the season and a new location for them. This equipment is all owned by Majestic Midways. They had some other folks book in with games and food, but all these rides belong to Majestic. Between all the trucks, people to drive them, fuel and support equipment, there's a lot more to consider than just setting up some rides. I believe they're bringing a total of 20 pieces of equipment on this lot. It's a combination of family rides, thrill rides, kitty rides, and some fun houses. All right, that's it for day one. A few more pieces need to get pulled in tonight. The rock star is on the way as well as the crazy bus and uh, maybe most importantly, the generator because without power, none of this stuff is gonna work. Well, good morning. It is uh, the morning after the pull on and we're going to record some uh, ride setups today. I don't know specifically which rides we're gonna do. We've got the Orient Express there which is a possibility for today, as well as the Century Wheel. The rock star there in the background behind the generator, I would have liked to have recorded that. That went up last night in the dark, and the cameras really don't pick up all that well in the nighttime. So we missed out on the rock star on this trip. This little rock town ride, this also went up last night. Cute little ride. And then the zipper went up last night, which we've already seen. There's uh, the scooters over there. We could do a video on that. We got these uh, bumblebees here. All these rides over here we've done. It's the Sizzler, the Alien Abduction, the Zipper, and the Wisdom Himalaya. This is one of Majestic's new rides for this year. This was one they completely rebuilt and then they put it on a uh, old Hampton Umbrella Rides trailer. Kite Flyer was all redone for this year. All new lights, all new paint. And the Super Shot also, that is all in fresh paint for this year. So depending on which ride the crew does, depends whether we're gonna be able to record uh, just a single ride or whether we're gonna be able to get multiple rides out of this trip. So it looks like I'm gonna focus on the Century Wheel today, another large ride that folds up onto a single trailer. Like many other rides, this one requires power to actually set it up. So they'll take off the rear bumper and pull lines to the generator first. While they wait for the generator to get fired up, they can take care of some odds and ends that don't require power. The Century Wheel came out in 1993 on the 100th anniversary of the debut of the Ferris Wheel at the Chicago World's Fair. Chance Rides took input from several operators, including Majestic, during the design of this wheel. This is one of the original Century Wheels produced with serial number three. These aluminum tubes are called wind braces. They provide extra lateral support and prevent excess swaying of the ride. The wind braces are moved from their travel position and pinned to the towers. They'll swing into final position after the towers are raised. Yeah. 
Now that they have power, they can start to level the ride. This ride uses hydraulic rams built into the trailer. We previously saw the Zipper, another chance ride with a similar arrangement. A handheld remote pendant is used to control the cylinders. Just like the zipper, the hydraulic jacks are only used for the initial leveling. Once the ride is level, screw jacks are lowered to hold it in position. With the screw jacks lowered, the hydraulic jacks can be retracted. The sentry wheel uses an interesting configuration of wings that pivot out from the trailer. This widens the stance. Chance refers to these as stub towers. The stub towers pivot out from the trailer and they're braced by a toggle clamp sort of arrangement. The stub towers have their own screw jacks for support that need to be cranked down. With the stub towers folded out, the main tower is bolted in place. You can see from this shot with the stub towers folded how the main tower would not align until they're folded out. This is another bit of cleverness. The same control pendant can be used for multiple functions depending on where it's plugged in. Here they're switching it from controlling the jacks to controlling the towers. Hydraulic cylinders are used to lift the front tower legs. Then the rear stub towers are folded out, latched in place, and their screw jacks dropped. Here a sling is being installed. This will cradle the sweeps as the rear tower raises. With the stub towers folded out, a few more things need to be bolted together that don't line up when the ride is in its travel position. This is just a little ride configuration issue here. The sign on the hub can go on either side depending on which way in the midway it's facing. So here they're shifting it from the rear to the front. Then the sign is pulled from its travel position and mounted. As brace is removed, it just ensures that the gondolas stay stacked going down the road. And then a gantry crane is erected that will later be used for lifting the gondolas. There's a cradle that holds the ferris wheel axle for travel and several braces that need to be removed before the tower can be lifted. As the tower goes up, the cradle can be tilted out of position. The rear tower with all the sweeps attached is much heavier than the front tower and has much bigger hydraulic cylinders to lift. While the rear tower is slowly lifted, decking can be removed. And the front and rear towers finally meet in the middle. Here's another clever design element. These pieces being installed are actually ramps from the decking, but during setup, they're used as ladders. All four corners of the trailer deck slide out to make additional room. With the deck slid out, there's enough room to install this plate. It gives extra room for the cart to install the gondolas. There's electric winches on all four towers, and the two rear winches are attached to the sling that's holding the sweeps up. The slack is taken up on the winches. That allows the bracket to be able to be disconnected from the towers, and the sweeps are slowly lowered. Incidentally, I've been told that they're called spokes when they're on a Ferris wheel, not sweeps, but Chance calls them sweeps in their manual, so that's what we're gonna call them here. 
The winches are hooked to the sweeps at all four corners and spread the two outers. While the winches are holding the sweeps, the inner and outer spreaders can be installed. After the spreaders are installed, the winches are moved into the next set of sweeps and the process repeats itself. The way this wheel is spread seems very safe to me. There's no point where the wheel is drastically out of balance like it is on some models of Ferris wheels. This process continues until all the sweeps are spread and all of the spreaders are installed. At this point, there's one open gap at the top of the wheel as the sweeps are coming together. Speaking of how balanced the wheel is, at this point, the entire wheel is spun by hand 180 degrees to bring that empty space to the bottom where the last large spreader can be installed. Once the final spreaders are installed, some of the extra scaffolding they'd been using is removed and the decking is reconfigured. The wind braces are now lowered and cinched up. The rim irons are unloaded from the belly of the trailer and put up on the deck in preparation for installing them. The rim irons are then pinned to the end of the sweeps and the spreader bars. Once the first set of rim irons is installed, the wheels rotate it by hand until they engage with the drive tires. From here on out, the drive tires will be used to rotate the wheel.
Before the setup can continue, there's a number of pins and bolts that need to be installed up in the hub. I thought these diagrams might give a better picture of what's happening up there. At this point, half of the crew can work on setting up decking and stairs, while the other half of the crew tightens up the bolts that hold the two halves of the tower together. The wheel is rotated so that cross cables can be tightened. There's also one set of inner spreader bars that still need to be attached. They also hoist some cross rods up. All of these rods and cables just ensure that the wheel runs true. This deck plate is slid out of the way to reveal a bunch of fencing and gates. And the crew continues to tighten bolts now that the wheel is in its final form. Now it's time to drop the gondola stems by releasing and then removing the racking pins. The rack that holds the gondolas is actually on wheels, so this track is installed so that the entire rack can be pushed off the front of the trailer. This frees up enough space for the overhead gantry to lower the gondolas onto the cart. A winch on the overhead gantry picks up the gondola and lowers it onto the cart. The cart is then moved forward and the gondola is lifted onto the stem. From here it's pinned, then the gondola is rotated 90 degrees and pinned again. The gondolas are installed around the wheel in a staggered fashion that ensures the wheel stays balanced. There are five gondolas in each stack, and as each stack is emptied, the pole that they're racked on is removed. This shot shows a pretty good look at the lifting adapter that's used to move the gondolas.
Now normally they would be dropping the canopies, but they were planning on washing this ride the next day, so they were leaving them in the up position. The last step they had to handle here was installing a bunch of jumper wires which connected the lights on the spreader bars to the lights on the sweeps. I wasn't able to get any video of this ride completely set up, but fortunately the crew sent me some video from their next location, so I really appreciate that. And if you like videos like this, click that link to the left and come along for the ride.